We're going book shopping. I'm so pumped. I have wanted to come here for the entire time that I've been in Vegas and I'm actually leaving tomorrow. So today is my last chance to go. It's my last opportunity and if I don't go, I'm gonna regret it because the store just looks so cute and so fun. Not to mention some new releases came out this week which I've wanted to go and get and obviously I haven't. So we're gonna go drive to the bookstore. Maple lemonade with activated charcoal. Honestly, the bottle's just so pretty. That's why I bought it. Let's see if it's any good. Um, okay. Or I won't be drinking it. I'm really gonna have to pull over to open this. I'm so thirsty. What is happening? Oh my god, okay, the whole cap is ripping off. Like the whole cap came off. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'll say it was worth pulling over for on the side of the highway. Oh, a little bit of traffic. Oh, here comes the traffic. Let's put on old music. That'll change the mood. That'll make traffic fun. Days of ink is getting old. It's four o'clock in the film today. Five minutes away and this is ugh, this is where the parking anxiety sets in I read one Google review that was like good luck finding parking it's street parking and it's all I can think about this truck is so big that I don't feel comfortable because I've never tried to parallel park in it so I'm not gonna try now like at least it's not I mean I, Honestly, I don't know what time would be like rush hour for a bookstore, but maybe it is. I don't know. I just hope that I can find easy parking. I found parking. I had to park twice. First of all, anytime I hear that people like have to park on the street, I immediately think of New York. And like, that's not the case. This is wide open. Like I just pulled into, like there's all parking space. It's literally wide open. The spots are huge. So anxiety for nothing as always. And we're here. I'm literally parked in front of the store. So, let's go inside. That was the most beautiful bookstore I've ever been in. I've I've never been somewhere like that. It was so fun to just walk around and they had so many like little knickknacks and just really funky stuff that you would only see at a store like that. I'm gonna go over the books when I get back because I don't even know what I got. Those are the kind of places you go and you just feel it out. I went in with the idea of like two books that just came out, but knowing that it was like an independent bookstore, I didn't know if they would have them. And they did, so that was 
that was really cool okay what are we doing oh my god use your signal i do this every single time that i go somewhere i look for the book that i'm looking for until i'm absolutely sure that i cannot find it and they do not have it and then i go and ask someone who works there and they weren't like rude or anything they were just like really quiet and like standoffish and it made me feel like i was like a nuisance to ask where a book was could be an internal struggle i don't know that's not really how i am though it's just like they were not friendly and then the weirdest thing was that they do this fake bird adoption and they have all of these little plastic birds in the tree and it was funny because they have these descriptions and they have the names of the bird and i was like oh my gosh this is hilarious what a great way to raise money for something and then there was a big sign above where you pay that was this oath to adopt your fake bird but I, I was going to get a bird because i found one that was really funny and i took it to the front i asked her what organization is the profits for to my surprise it is not a donation it is just purely revenue for the store oh i'm gonna pass on that so that was super weird they were funny too would have made a great thing to raise money for but okay i'm headed home then we're gonna go over my books because i got some totally random books aside from what i actually went in there for hmm okay let's go over the books that i got i uh, got some really random books okay so the book that i went there for was the familiar by lee bardugo and <laughs> my mom was like call me before you leave the bookstore i want to know what you're gonna get and i called her and i was telling her what i was gonna get and she was like uh your book fairy might have gotten you that book already my mom got me that one which saved me from buying a book obviously opened up uh to buy more books and then the second book that i went was went the second book that i went for was a short walk through a wide world and this was another one of the new releases this one got me because said readers of the invisible life of Addie LaRue and life of Pi. I don't know what life of Pi is actually I mean I've heard of it I don't know what it is though but I love the invisible life of Addie LaRue and I don't even know what that book is considered but that book was so good if this book says I'm gonna like it based off that book I will take the book wreck so I bought it and it's just so cool it's very I don't know if you can see it it's like a very matte texture. I don't think I've ever bought a book that had this. Oh, let's see what the inside looks like. That is so, oh, a bug. That is so pretty. Oh my gosh, look at that font. Um, what is this book actually about? <laughs> I, I don't know. I actually don't know. A dazzling epic novel that charts the incredible adventurous life of one woman as she journeys the globe trying to outrun a mysterious curse that will destroy her if she ever stops moving. I also never stop moving. Oh, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed already. I feel like this is going to be such a good book. And two little random, little random novellas. I don't know if this one's a novella. Um, two little cuties. So I got What Moves the Dead. This is the Edgar Allan Poe retelling. So I've seen this before. It's gonna be technically horror. It takes up residence beneath your skin and refuses to leave. Creepy, claustrophobic, and completely entertaining. Will make your skin crawl. We're talking Poe, we're talking horror. Uh, there's also a second one out, which is what caught my attention. It was just a, such a cute little hardcover book and I was like, ooh, what's this? And then it looked familiar. And then I saw this one, I was like, oh, this one absolutely looks familiar. But again, don't, know any details and i was like so cute because i'm in between books right now so a little a little novella just sounds perfect also i the first time i heard the term novella i thought that people were reading spanish soap operas i know now that they're not but that's where my head went and i felt the need to share that daytime soap opera i'm just like a novella i don't even i don't know then this book which i've actually never heard it before i've never seen this before i don't have it on any one of my many organized tbrs but the ah, bugs the last tale of the flower bride and it's just really really pretty it's probably what caught my attention again i think that this was 
I think that this was also in the horror section. Obviously, I went in there with, uh, in a very dark mood. So, that's that. Sweet as a piece of fairy fruit and just as wicked. Every bite is velvet, every swallow is gold, and the taste lingers forever like a dream. I was like, I don't even know what that means, but that is a, a whole mood in itself. It says, take a fairy tale, infuse it with gothic flair, drizzle in some dark romance, and you get the last tale of the flower bride. I'm sold. I'm not even going to read what this book is actually about. I really enjoy reading books just completely blind with no information, and then I'm totally shocked. Like, I have no idea what the plot is. So, from the beginning of the book, everything is new. These are my three books. I feel really good about them. Which one do I want to read? I feel like I'm gonna go with this one. Or this one. Or I could just start this one because I have tomorrow before the weekend. Or I could read this over the weekend. Or I could read this tonight. But this one sounds better. 